morning. I hope everyone is doing well and glad you're here. Thank you for always showing up every week. If you have questions, if you have updates about your work or a comments, please feel free to put those into the comment box. We appreciate that. And um, hopefully you're you're coming along well with your your celebration of the holidays. Uh, so to all of you, Merry Christmas. A little bit early. We've got several weeks to go here and, and we're, we're really moving along on this quilt. I want to let you know that today, uh, neither one of my sewing machines is working. So today is going to be strictly the, the hand quilting side of this and it's really fun and this is a great block for this to, to have happened. So I uh, we're working on the castle wall today and so as soon as i see a couple of people popping into the um, comment box and i know you're here please say hi and we'll get started here in just a moment ah thank you sharon for popping in so i know you're here and we can get this um, going hi linda and dale <clears throat> There's Susie and Dot. Excellent. Excellent. And John's with us today. And so he just popped in. That's great. So um, again, uh, we're going to we're going to be working on the block called Castle Wall. So I'm going to pop you down to my desktop and we're going to take a look at this block. Um, it's such a pretty block. I don't think I had ever um, paid much attention to it or really even noticed it before and I love it. So I want to I want to talk a little bit about the putting together of this. I, I tackled it a little bit differently. Um, in this particular one you see where she has put um, fussy cut of those little flowers and some of the fabric that we had in our kit was this one and so I took the the Liberty and fussy cut um, my squares so that they would fit into into that and I think it's it's looking pretty pretty fun at this point so if you um, desire to fussy cut that and you have the kit uh, this is this is the fabric out of the kit that I used. All right. So um, again, on the templates, if you are making the templates, uh, you know the template plastic, um, you know heavy heavy paper, those things work great for for as far as the templates. Again, I use freezer paper uh, doubled, so I draw it onto a single sheet of freezer paper then I cut that out um, shiny side down you draw it on the the dull side of the paper put shiny side down and then uh, put your drawn template on top of another piece of freezer paper both of them shiny side down iron them together and then cut out your template and the reason I I really like the freezer paper for my templates is because I can iron them to the fabric it stays put makes for easier cutting out and for a lot of these I can use my rotary cutter for that all right so once I've got my my templates uh, and down here at the bottom I want to draw your attention to to make four DE pieces this is the same block as the G template um, on the the you know on this page let me move my book here a little bit uh, this is the G template I simply cut the G template and you know cut that out and worked with that and so I did not use the the D for that particular block the D block also fits in here uh, into this space so you still need four of the D uh, but you do not need when you go over here to the E you do not necessarily need um, that one uh, unless you want to make it so you don't do 
uh, D and E if you already have cut out G uh, on that castle wall. This just provided another seam for me and it was just as easy uh, in my opinion to to work at it from um, one block instead of sewing another two together. So you have all your templates and all your pieces. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do is assemble your B squares um, to the top, bottom, and the sides of your A block in the center. Then you'll put this component together and it says here inside this box G or D E. So again I simply use the G on that. So you're going to sew two C's to the side of B and then we'll place that in so you know in the corners which leaves these open sp spaces where in the final part um, the D block goes in and then you have that completed. Now I did a little bit of fussy cutting also on the center and if you need to go back and review anything on the straight running stitches or the set in seams uh, you know, last week we I showed you my method of sewing through the seams, removing the two stitches, and continuing on. You can do it. This works for that as well because you've got those um, set-in seams on this if you choose to, to go that route. Or you can... Um, if you're, if I'm doing all of this one by hand simply because um, having moved to a new area, I haven't found a place to take my machine and find out what's going on with it. So I'll get that repaired. So it's great that we're working hand, you know, hand sewing and hand stitching on this. Um, and it's been great fun just to take the whole block and, and work on that. So pages 20 and 30 will get you um, those again. So with that being said, I'm going to remove my book and I worked uh, uh, you know somewhat so that I can share with you I, I did fussy cut um, this center out of that of another fabric from the kit so I have this in the center I fussy cut these squares and then I put a, um, a small floral in between so this is how it's shaping up at this point and we're going to work on making that first unit I'm going to get my thread out of the way um, gets pulled around there all right so I have in front of me I sewed one side of that unit together um, as you as you saw when I had this over here I put my four blocks on the top bottom and both sides of the block and now I'm putting together the units so um, they fit in like this and when you're cutting your fabrics and and I was pretty close to to doing that um, completely so when you are looking at your template if you want to cut these with your rotary cutter again you measure you know the distance um, to what you're going to cut your strips you'll cut your strips let me turn this around so that um, we can look at this your 45 degree angle goes on the top or the bottom whichever makes if you're right or left-handed sometimes that makes a difference um, you know that's going to go across the top and you and you're working the same distance from here to here which is I'm not getting this even because this is kind of in my way um, anyway you're going to go in um, the distance from here to here the same goes for out here so you're one inch two inch and to the halfway mark and then you'll um, you know you're going to cut your your um, angle um, with that so we we've we've shared that a couple of times so hopefully um, that makes some sense to you so now let's go ahead and get started I'm using the red thread again um, simply because I know it's a little bit easier um, for you to see so I 
grab a pin. I'm going to put my pin straight in on, you know, where those two lines cross. And again, I don't necessarily use dots. I, I cross the lines uh, because it's, for me, it just, um, I get a little bit more accuracy because the dots are bigger and I always question, well, where on the dot do I, you know, do I put it? So I'm taking that needle, I'm putting it all the way through between my two fingers, I'm holding it in place and then I'm um, dropping a pin, you know, a little bit away to it and I'm going to take this pin out now and move it to the other side and again, I'm going to put that pin right where those two lines cross and I'm going to come up right there where that you know comes up I don't know that you can see those lines real well but my pin has come up directly in that pushing my pin all the way in and again reminder that you have this little um, triangle up in the corner and that's what you should have so don't worry about um, that being there. It's supposed to be. All right. And yeah, just as a, I'm going to work from this side because my line is a little bit easier to see um, on that. So I've, I've put a knot at the end of my thread. And as you've read in the book and as we've done before, we start... Um, a couple of stitches away from that corner so that we can take some back stitches and secure that corner in there and again I'm going straight in at the line I'm coming up and now I'm going to proceed um, across my fabric I'm taking about 8 inch stitches um, across and when you start again it's nice to take one back stitch and then keep going and that back stitch um, and don't poke yourself in the finger like I just did um, and that back stitch helps secure your stitching in place and just a, a little bit more security there all right now when you come to the end I'm taking a little bit bigger stitch but I'm going to back stitch I'm bringing my needle up right where those two lines cross again and now I, you know, I'm going to take those back stitches. And part of that whole back stitch is not only to secure um, that corner so that there are no holes, but it's also to move that your knot away from the corner because you don't want your your knot in the corner of to add bulk um, so that you get those nice crisp points. And so I'm. Um, removing that and also and I'm knotting this up um, you know I always do that on camera or at least I do and I you know and I find that if I go ahead and knot my needle right away um, I don't forget and uh, so now I have this unit and again we don't really necessarily um, press it because the, the pressing just makes it a little bit harder to get into the corner so I wait to, to press it um, till later so now I have my block here again and I'm going to be putting this piece in here. So it's it's going to the next um, piece around. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I don't have any questions 
let me go back um, and make sure oh Sharon I'm glad you love the Lemoyne star it's my favorite I just love it um, yeah speaking of cold Diana we I had my first um, first snow here um, since I left Michigan so that was really fun all right Um, Sherry, uh, drive safely. Uh, we'll hope to, uh, to see you. All right. And John maybe can answer Chris's question. I think they're, they're there on YouTube. Um, and you can go back at any point if you can't do it right now, but you want to do this quilt. All right. So here we go again. I, uh, this goes in um, right here I'm turning this part over and let's get this put in so again right where those two lines cross going here bringing the you know the pin up right where those two lines cross and you know for me this is really important to get this part correct um, it's how it's really how you get you know that the sewing and all of your points to come together and work on that now you're going to want to keep everything pulled away because we're going to be working right up there where you see and let me get my hands out of the way um you know, right there where that, the, you know, the red sewing line comes up and that's where we're going to put um, our stitches in those, those spots. Um, so you really want to keep everything out of the way. And now I'm coming right up where I had that last stitch. And if you can see that, I have, my needle has come up right at the, well, not quite. Let me make sure I get that completely right there in that corner. So I'm coming up right again where those two lines meet. And hopefully you can sort of see that on camera. I'm holding that in place. And I wanna get my fingers under there so it doesn't slip as I put my pin in um, right next to it. All right, now I'm gonna remove that pin and this one. And now we can start. And again, I'm, I'm going to flip mine over just simply so um, hopefully you can see um, that line as much as I can. And, um, and it, again, I'm coming up a couple of stitches away from the edge. Back stitching couple of stitches and again I'm not crossing over that line I'm going straight up to it and now I'm gonna take my running stitch and you know work my my way across Again, when I stop to reload my needle, I'm taking a back stitch and continuing across. Uh, generally speaking, I can get um, pretty much all the way across um, with only stopping in the center, um, doing it you know, a little bit different, trying to go slowly um, so that you can actually see what I'm, you know, what I'm doing. Um, here with my running stitch and again I want to come up keeping every all of my seams you know away from that where I want to stitch because um, I don't want to catch anything and I'm coming up right where my last seam ended 
And now I'm going to take a couple of back stitches to secure that and make sure that um, it stays put right in there. All right. And I'm when I'm going to take one more um, simply because that knot is a little too close for me. So I'm going to take one more back stitch. Um, I kind of did that one a little bit long just to move it along a little faster. All right. Because you don't, you really don't want that knot in um, in your corner to get in your seam, um, and you want you really do want to catch and I, I hopefully you can see this on screen let me try to move that my stitch ended here in the same place it ended there and that's part of what keeps those um, seams you know from gaping open I know several of you had that question before how do you keep you know that um, you know your corners from you know, having that gaposis, and uh, and that's really how um, I accomplished that that feat. And she talks about that. Um, so now I have both. You know, both sides. Um, you know, I sewed up that side. I've got this. Now we're going to turn this in. Again, you're going to keep all of this out of the way. I'm taking it to the right. Let me get rid of that sewing needle out of my hand. And now lining, we're going to line all this up. And again, I want to take this, you know, the top pin. And I'm going again right in where those two lines cross on the top. And I'm taking it in where those two lines cross on the bottom, holding all that fabric out of the way. Again, dropping a pin, making sure that's straight, just a, a, you know, an inch or two away from, from that so I can work around that. I'm going to this side and again, here is where this kind of wants to go underneath. Make sure you you keep that pulled out. I'm bringing this needle in right there um, where those two lines cross and my other, my red, you know, thread, my seam line. And again, you don't want to, you know, get, I'm going to have to probably get this out of the camera so I can see to get that in. And then I'll show you what I did. All right, so I've got my pin coming up right there where my seam line ended um, on both the front and the back, pushing that all in, making sure all of my uh, fabric is out of the way of the seam line so I can get that. I'm going to be holding that so it doesn't move um, underneath, pushing that in. All right. So now I've got my, my pins in, and this is coming um, away from that seam line. So now I need to sew uh, between those two seams. So let me grab my, my thread. Again, coming up a few stitches away from that edge. And back stitching right into that seam line and going down and under so it crosses over and picks up. There's no chance for ga gaping um, through that. And now I can do my, you know, my running stitch. Back stitching. Get
Again, if you can keep your stitches to about an eighth of an inch, I think you'll be very happy um, with the results on the top. And it's how I'm keeping this red thread from not showing through um, on the upper, you know, when I when I open it up and, and press it, which is um, important to me. I really don't want that red thread, and I don't want to necessarily have to redo this. Um, as I shared with you before, I get real impatient when I have to take things out. So um, my result, you know, what I do is I try to, you know, do do it the best way that I can the first time so that I don't have to undo. doesn't always work, as you well know. Um, but I pretend that I'm being smart and not having to redo things. And I want to take that last stitch out here simply um, so that I can knot it off and keep that knot away from the corner. All right. I love this that, you know, uh, like where I'm at um, today with both of my machines um, gone down. Um, but this hand stitching is very therapeutic and a good way to continue with that. So here we go. We have now the two sides together. Um, I have not pressed this out because um, those seams will um, get pressed down. And as you can see, you know, those points are, you know, right, right where they need to be all the way around when, when you go at it from, from that perspective. All right. So now we have this side, we're going in and again, we're taking all of this, making sure it's to the right, getting our pins in place. So again, I want to pin... right where that seam comes up and I'm going to get my finger in there and I'm coming up right where those two seams cross holding that in place And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side, right in where those two cross. And um, here I'll share something with you because um, if you can see I'm I you know struggling a little bit with putting those pins in and keeping the fabric it's because it's catching on my dry skin um, with the weather and the humidity down at least where I live um, and I did you know put um, lotion on this morning but but that but cotton fabric dries out your skin. And so I find myself putting lotion on several times a day um, because the uh, cotton is, is getting on my hands. And I know that's, that's a weird thing to um, talk about, um, but, it's, but it's a little bit of a reality um, for me uh, right now because it's catching. And I would probably stop and put lotion on all right, so this last seam that we'll do to, to get this, again, about a half an inch away from the edge, taking two to three back stitches to secure that corner. And again, I want to make sure that I'm hitting right in that corner and coming up so that you can see that those two, let me go this way, those two are, are meeting right at that corner. Um, and now I'm buzzing across this. Right. 
take my back stitch and then hopefully finish off this again I'm coming up with my last stitch right in that corner where the two lines meet I know I've said that a lot um, but that's just really important um, to get your those points and those corners um, done and done well so that you have no gaping at that at that point and it's nice and secure and your blocks come out quite pretty um, with that alrighty knotting that off cutting it and again as you can see there's just you know the point and when you press it now I want to talk a little bit about that um, as we're coming in here if you look at the picture the diamonds are open and this comes down to the center um, like that so I would uh, you, you still need to um, pretty much set your seam and I didn't do that pardon my faux pas and um, so set your seam so that that's nice and especially with you know when you're hand stitching uh, you really do have a, a bit of a rise there and I'm basically training my fabric where I want it to go at this point because now I'm going to you know move it to the front and I just want to press those seams with the side of my iron and letting the iron sit there for a second or two and um, and there you go so once you have all of those units all the way around one of the things that I um, have already decided is that they put all of those around before they put the D castle wall piece in there I am I think I'm gonna do it well I know I'm going to do it a little bit differently because this uh, D unit fits into here and so with each one of these that I finish I'm gonna put the put the D unit in because I'll have less bulk um, on this side a little bit easier I think to work with so the next thing that I'm going to do is putting in this unit and this unit before I move on to putting the last two on so I'm gonna uh, do that as I go around the block simply to eliminate some of the bulk that's in my hands when I'm hand stitching so that you know you every the you know that D block that goes in here you're going to do it exactly how I just showed you that we did it here uh, it's it's going to fit in you're going to sew down you'll sew across and you'll sew up just like we did here down across and up so it's not going to be any any different um, than that and so um, and then that D corner the D block goes here all right let me move that over a little bit to try to keep all of this in your sight line okay and then the G unit you're going to do the same thing you will sew down you'll sew across and you'll sew across um, here as well and then your block will be complete and that's what it will look look like when you're completely done so hopefully that was helpful to you um, Diane that would be and that would be correct um, you are right on that uh, let's see
Don, um, hopefully you'll recover quickly and the COVID wasn't too bad. Um, and uh, thank you for your comments. And again, please, if you can get into the forum, put your work up there. If not, my email address is there um, and I will share your pictures and your progress. I'm very, you know, it's, it's very good to hear and to see what's coming um, on your work and just knowing how well you're doing along the way. So if you could share that with us on the forum, that would be wonderful. But if for whatever reason um, you're not getting your pictures up on the forum or you are not yet a member of the quilt show, again, I encourage that, um, especially the last month, um, great stuff on you know the guests that were there. Um, the things that, that we're learning on the quilt show has been terrific. So um, tune into that and uh, if you can and uh, you'll you'll find that all these shows are on the quilt show in uh, under learn and we'll work on that you have an absolute wonderful week and we will see you next week and next week I think our block is called let me just take a quick look to make sure that I get it get it correctly having trouble turning the pages here, is the mill wheel. That's going to be fun. Um, made that block before. I love it. So thank you for being here always, and we'll see you next week.